In this lesson, we will focus on how to find the domain of a function. We will start with the main concept behind determining a function's domain. Then we will work through various examples, including polynomial functions, rational functions, radical functions, and functions involving fractions with radicals. When working with real numbers, there are two rules we must never break. Firstly, we cannot divide by zero. Division by zero is undefined. Remember this rule when finding the domain of a function with a variable in the denominator. Secondly, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. The square root of a negative number is undefined in the real number system. Remember this rule when finding the domain of a function with a variable under a square root. The domain of a function consists of all possible values of x for which the function is defined. In other words, it is the set of all values of x that you can plug into a function without breaking these rules. Keep this in mind as we proceed. Polynomial functions do not have a variable in the denominator or under a square root. So, we do not need to worry about dividing by zero or taking the square root of a negative number. Therefore, polynomial functions are defined for all values of x, which means their domain is all real numbers. In interval notation, this is written as, in parentheses, negative infinity, comma, positive infinity. You can write the domain in either of these ways. They mean the same thing. Now, let's move on to finding the domain of rational functions. Unlike polynomial functions, rational functions do have a variable in the denominator. Therefore, for a rational function to be defined, the denominator must not equal zero, as division by zero is undefined. To find the domain of a rational function, set the denominator not equal to zero and solve the resulting inequality. The solution to the inequality represents the domain of the function. For this function to be defined, x minus 7 must not equal 0. Now, solving this inequality, we find that x cannot equal 7, right? Therefore, the domain of this rational function is all real numbers except 7. To write the domain in interval notation, first represent it on a number line. A number line helps to clearly visualize which numbers are included and excluded from the domain. Mark an open circle at 7. This indicates that 7 is excluded from the domain. Then, shade the line to the left and right of 7. This indicates that all other real numbers are included in the domain. Now, from this, you can easily write the domain in interval notation as negative infinity to 7 union 7 to positive infinity. The parentheses around 7 indicate that 7 is excluded from the domain. Note that parentheses are also used for negative and positive infinity because they do not represent a specific point on a number line. For this function to be defined, x squared minus 16 must not equal 0. Now, to solve this inequality, first factor the quadratic expression using the difference of two squares formula. Then, set each factor not equal to 0. Solving the first inequality, we find that x cannot equal negative 4. Solving the second inequality, we find that x cannot equal 4. Therefore, the domain of this rational function is all real numbers except negative 4 and 4. To represent this on a number line, mark an open circle at both negative 4 and 4. Then, shade the line to the left of negative 4, between negative 4 and 4, and to the right of 4. From this, you can write the domain in interval notation as negative infinity to negative 4 union negative 4 to 4 union 4 to positive infinity. The parentheses around negative 4 and 4 indicate that both of these numbers are excluded from the domain. For this function to be defined, x squared plus 9 must not equal 0. Notice that when we square any real number, the result is always non-negative number. Adding 9 to that squared value will always result in a positive number. It can never be 0, right? So there is no real value of x that would make the denominator equal to zero. Therefore, the domain of this rational function is all real numbers. Now, it's your turn. Please pause the video and give it a try. For this function to be defined, the trinomial must not equal zero, right? Now to solve this inequality, first factor the trinomial. To do that, find two numbers that multiply to give 15 and add up to negative eight. These numbers are negative 3 and negative 5, right? So when we factor, it becomes x minus 3 times x minus 5. Now, setting each factor not equal to 0 and solving for x, we find that x cannot equal 3 
or x cannot equal 5. Therefore, the domain of this rational function is all real numbers except 3 and 5. To represent this on a number line, mark an open circle both at 3 and 5. Then, shade the rest of the line. From this, you can write the domain in interval notation. Now, let's move on to finding the domain of radical functions. Radical functions do have a variable under a radical and can have either an odd or an even index. When the index is odd, the expression under the radical can be any real number. This is because taking the odd root of any real number always results in a real number. Therefore, radical functions with an odd index are defined for all values of x, which means their domain is all real numbers. In our examples, the second and fourth functions have odd indexes, so their domain is all real numbers. However, for a radical function with an even index to be defined, the expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to zero. This is because taking the even root of a negative number results in an imaginary number, which does not belong to a real number system. To find the domain of a radical function with an even index, set the expression under the radical greater than or equal to zero and solve the resulting inequality. The solution to the inequality represents the domain of the function. Remember, if the index of the radical is not shown, it is assumed to be 2, which is an even number and is commonly known as the square root. So, in our examples, the first, third and last functions have even indexes. Let's find the domain of each function separately. For this function to be defined, x minus 9 must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, solving this inequality, we find that x is greater than or equal to 9, right? Therefore, the domain of this radical function is all real numbers greater than or equal to 9. To represent this on a number line, mark a closed circle at 9. This indicates that 9 is included in the domain. Then shade the line to the right of 9, indicating that all values of x greater than 9 are also included in the domain. From this, you can write the domain in interval notation. The bracket around 9 indicates that 9 is included in the domain. This one is for you. Please pause the video and give it a try. For this function to be defined, 6 minus 2x must be greater than or equal to 0. Now, to solve this inequality, first subtract 6 from both sides. Then divide both sides by negative 2. Remember, when you divide or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, you must change the direction of the inequality. Keep this in mind. It is important. Therefore, the domain of this radical function is all real numbers less than or equal to 3. To represent this on a number line, mark a closed circle at 3 and shade the line to the left. From this, you can write the domain in interval notation. The next one is a bit challenging. It requires solving a quadratic inequality, so stay with me. For this function to be defined, the trinomial must be greater than or equal to 0. This is a quadratic inequality and we can solve it using a sign chart method. First, change the inequality to an equation and solve for x. Let's use the factoring method. Find two numbers that multiply to give negative 21 and add up to 4. These numbers are negative 3 and 7, right? So when you factor, it becomes x minus 3 times x plus 7. Now, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. We get x equals 3 or x equals negative 7, right? Next, draw a number line and plot the solutions to the quadratic equation. Notice that our number line is divided into three intervals, less than negative 7, between negative 7 and 3, and greater than 3. Then, choose a test point from each interval. Let's use negative 8 for the first, 0 for the second, and 4 for the third. Now, Substitute these test points into the quadratic expression to determine whether it is positive or negative in each interval. Instead of using the original expression, we can use its factored form, which is easier to evaluate. For the first interval, substituting negative 8, negative 8 minus 3, results in a negative number, and negative 8 plus 7 also results in a negative number. The product of two negative numbers is positive, so the quadratic expression is positive in the first interval. For the second interval, substituting 0 gives us a negative product. So, the expression is negative in this interval. For the third interval, substituting 4 gives us a positive product. So, 
the expression is positive in this interval. Additionally, we know that the expression equals 0 when x equals negative 7 or 3, right? Now, because the quadratic expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to 0, identify intervals where it is positive or 0. It is 0 when x equals negative 7 or 3. It is positive when x is less than negative 7 or greater than 3. Therefore, the domain of this radical function is all real numbers less than or equal to negative 7 or greater than or equal to 3. Note that the interval between negative 7 and 3 is excluded from the domain because we cannot take the square root of negative numbers. Now let's move on to finding the domain of functions involving fractions with radicals. These functions do have a variable both in the denominator and under a radical. We will consider cases where a radical appears in the numerator, denominator, or both, as well as when the entire fraction is under a radical. Stay with me. When a radical appears in the numerator, for the function to be defined, the expression under the radical must be greater than or equal to zero, and the denominator must not equal zero. Now, to find the domain of the function, first solve these inequalities separately. Solving the first inequality, we find that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Solving the second inequality, we find that x cannot be equal to negative 2, or x cannot be equal to 2. Next, plot these results on the same number line. The first result includes all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5. The second result includes all real numbers except negative 2 and 2. Then, identify the intersection, which is the region where both inequalities hold true simultaneously. This region includes all real numbers between negative 5 and negative 2, including negative 5, but excluding negative 2, or between negative 2 and 2, excluding both, or from 2 to positive infinity, excluding 2. This intersection region represents the domain of the function, which consists of all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 5, except negative 2 and 2. When a radical appears in the denominator, for the function to be defined, the expression under the radical must be greater than 0. Please note that the inequality is greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. This is to exclude values of x that would make the denominator 0. Now solving this inequality, we find that x is greater than negative 9. Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers greater than negative 9. When radicals appear both in the numerator and denominator for the function to be defined, the expression under the numerator radical must be greater than or equal to 0, and the expression under the denominator radical must be greater than 0. Please note that for the numerator expression, we use greater than or equal to 0 because 0 in the numerator is acceptable. However, for the denominator expression, we use greater than 0 since the denominator cannot be 0 as division by 0 is undefined. Keep this in mind, it is important. Now, to find the domain of the function, first, solve these inequalities separately. Solving the first inequality, we find that x is greater than or equal to negative 1. You can solve this quadratic inequality using the sign chart method as we did earlier. However, when the x term is missing, like in this case, you can solve it more quickly using the absolute value inequality. First, simply add 36 to both sides of the inequality. Then, take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x, and the square root of 36 is 6. For any algebraic expression, let's say u and any positive real number a. If the absolute value of u is greater than a, then u is less than negative a, or u is greater than a. So similarly, this is the same thing as x is less than negative 6 or x is greater than 6. Next, plot these results on the same number line. The first result includes all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 1. The second result includes all real numbers less than negative 6 or greater than 6. Then, identify the intersection, which is the region where both inequalities hold true simultaneously. What do you think? Which region is the intersection? It is only the region where x is greater than 6, right? Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers greater than 6.
When the entire fraction is under a radical, for the function to be defined, the entire fraction must be greater than or equal to zero. Now, to find the domain of the function solve this inequality. This is basically a rational inequality, and it can be solved using the sign chart method. First, find the values of x that make the fraction zero or undefined. It is going to be zero when the numerator is zero, that is, when x equals three, right? It is going to be undefined when the denominator is zero, that is, when x equals negative two, right? Next, plot these points on a number line. Notice that our number line is divided into three intervals, less than negative two, between negative two and three, and greater than three. Then, choose a test point from each interval. Let's use negative three for the first, zero for the second, and four for the third. Now substitute these test points into the fraction to determine whether it is positive or negative in each interval. For the first interval, substituting negative three, negative three minus three, results in a negative number, and negative three plus two, also results in a negative number. Dividing two negative numbers results in a positive number, right? So, the fraction is positive in the first interval. For the second interval, substituting zero gives us a negative quotient. So, the fraction is negative in this interval. For the third interval, substituting four gives us a positive quotient. So, the fraction is positive in this interval. Additionally, we know that the fraction equals zero when x equals three, but it is undefined when x equals negative two. Now, because the fraction under the radical must be greater than or equal to zero, identify intervals where it is positive or zero. It is zero when x equals three. But remember, it is undefined when x equals negative two. It is positive when x is less than negative two or greater than three. Therefore, the domain of this function is all real numbers less than negative two or greater than or equal to three. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.